Hello, my name is Mark Summerfeld. Today we're going to show you how we use our new angle making set. What it is, is a set of eight router bits that creates different angles, 11 and a quarter, 15, 30, 45 degree angles. And in doing so, we're going to show you how we're going to create angles on the corners of a cabinet. Here's a large radius we created like on an island or something, and you can see what we did there. Uh, we can also use it in creating angles on inside corners and outside corners on cabinets here like this. And what I like, the next set of kits and cabinets I built are going to have a tighter radius like this on every corner of every cabinet. And you can see by looking at the end grain here what we're actually going to be creating today. Uh, another thing we can do with this set is use the 30 and the, and the 15 degree angles and I created a range hood for above a stove. Uh, we got 30 degree angles here, 15 and so forth and creating this. So, you can see this set has got a lot of possibilities, they're endless, and we're going to show you today a few things that you can do with it. Okay, today we're going to create this type of an angled cabinet on a corner like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our two smallest cutters over here, the 11 and a quarter cutters, <clears throat> to create tongue and grooves between all of these pieces. What this is now, this is the face frame of our cabinet, let's say. We curve around with three pieces, and then we come over here, and this is like, say, the the style of our raised paneled end. All right, so what we're doing to create that, if you want to just practice with this, if you can make this joint, you can make any joint. We got a two inch piece here, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, and two inch. Those are the pieces we're going to use today to create this 90 degree corner. What we want to do is label them. On the outside edges now, of course, we're going to put grooves because we don't want any tongues on the outside corners. Okay, so if this is a groove, we're also going to put a groove here because that's going to coincide with a tongue here. This is going to be a groove. This will be a tongue. This will be a groove. This will be a tongue. This will be a groove. And this will be a tongue. So we got groove, tongue, groove, tongue, groove, tongue, groove, tongue. Okay? All right. When you start using this now, the first cutter you're going to put into there is your groove cutter. We're going to stick the groove cutter into our router, lock it up, and we'll show you how to set the height next. Okay, we've got our router bit set in our router, it's secured, and you want to set it to the right height so that that tongue on that cutter is approximately right in the center of your stock. And also make sure that you're hitting here. If you're hitting here, you know you're cutting on the top, and we got carbide at the bottom. Okay. So we got it set to the right height, and again, both of these bits, the male and the female, are height matched. So when we change bits, we're set at the same height, they'll coincide. All right, we're going to set our fence up now. Our fence will drop into our pivot point. We want to set that fence up and move the fence over here now so that there's an angle to this bit. I'm going to show you right here on this bit right here. So that that angle, you can see right here in a close-up, when that fence comes in right here so that the angle creates right here on the point right here on the point okay and you want a nice sharp point when you cut that angle right there and it might take you a couple times two or three times practice cuts to get it all right so we're going to come over here and I'm going to eyeball that right right there you can see I'm pretty close to my angle right there and we're going to make a practice cut this is a we're not going to use this piece of stock, but we're going to take a practice piece here, run that through, and see what we get. Okay, if you look real close, you can see I've got a nice sharp corner. In fact, is I'm taking a little bit too much off. If you look, you can see where I'm flush, I'm straight here. I'm taking a little bit too much off. Well, that's good in a way because you know you're getting a nice sharp corner. But the only thing is when you get to the end, you're going to get a little bit of snipe. But that's going to be okay and I'll explain why. But let's cut this through and I'll show you. Okay, you can see we got a nice clean cut there, but at the end, 
we have a little bit of snipe, you know, where that bit fell back into there because we're cutting off too much. But that's the way I create all these angles is to get a good joint. I, I allow for that snipe. So if I'm on a board, let's say that we're creating something here that wants to be about six inches long, well, we're going to get some stock that is longer than that, and we're going to glue it up, and then we'll cut the snipe off later. Okay? So we've got our set bit set exactly where we want it. Now, what we want to do next is take our stock, all of our joints that we have the groove. Remember we had these all laid out? We have the tongue, the groove, tongue, groove, tongue, groove. We're going to cut all the grooves, and we're going to do that next. Okay? And you can see when I'm doing this now, what I did for a push block is I just cut a piece of plywood and I pushed down with that and took another piece of stock and push in. And I ran my stock through there. Well, that's fine when you're working with short pieces, but if you get some long pieces in here, it's going to be kind of hard to do that. Well, if that's the case, what's nice is this feather guard. We'll show you how that works. Bring that over to the center, okay? Here's our stock. We're going to bring that down and let it rest. And that's our, <coughs> like a feather board. But also this is a guard because it gets you away from the bit. So what I do is just two fingers, press down as hard as I can with two fingers. Lock that down. And there's my feather board. And like I said, it's not only a feather board, it's a guard because there's no way you can get at the bit. Now we'll take that same push block we had and lay it flat. I don't have to push down anymore because my feather guard is. All I have to do is push in and run my stock through. Okay, this one gets both sides. Okay, we've got our groove here, we've got a groove on this side, we got a groove on this side here too, and we got a groove there, and then groove here. Now, what we got to do next now is cut, this is going to come over here. What we got to do next is cut a tongue to fit in that groove, tongue, tongue, and tongue. Well, so we'll show you how to set up our tongue cutter next. Okay, we have our tongue cutter in the router and set up the same height as we did our groove cutter. All right. What I'm going to do is make a practice cut at the same setting, okay? <clears throat> we're going to make sure we're at the same setting. I have a mark. I always mark the back of my fence here a little bit so I know I'm at the same setting. You can put a stop block back there if you want. But we're going to cut that at the same setting we did our groove cutter. And I'll show you what happens. <clears throat> Okay, what we're getting here, we're getting a good sharp edge here, but you can see our tongue isn't quite, not fitting into our groove enough. See, we got to get that tongue a little bit more of it exposed. So, you'll find out when you use the tongue cutter with this set, you're going to have to move that fence back just a little bit more to allow for cutting that tongue. Alright, so we'll try this here, and again, you might have to try on there. Right there, you can see I'm cutting more off, so I'm getting a straight edge. But if you look at that tongue, that tongue, I'm not going to get any snipe here because that tongue is catching on my outfeed fence. See? 
Here's my stock right flush here. I'm flush out in here too. So that allows me to cut a good tongue and still have it supported. Right there. We put the two together and the tongue seats perfectly into that groove. So we've got it set for all of our tongues. Now what we're going to do is we'll come into here and cut all of our tongue cuts. Here's our three pieces right here. And we've got them labeled T and G. All right, we've got the easy part done. We got the joints cut. Now we have to clamp this angle. And that's where sometimes it might be difficult, but we'll show you a couple of ways you can clamp this angle right there. Okay, you can see how everything fits just perfect going around the corners there now. What we're going to do next is show you how we're going to clamp this. Okay. Here's our pieces right here, and I said I was going to show you how we glue them up, but before we glue them up, if you look down at the bottom there, you're going to see a little daylight, a little daylight up here where those snipes are creating. Remember what I said always? If you're making something 31 inches long, cut it 38, so you can come in and cut that snipe off at the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is going to create, I'm going to cut this off at the top and at the bottom, and now I'll come back and show you how to glue them up next. Okay, here's our piece. I, here's the snipe I cut off. And if you don't want to check your joints, what you can do is, is put them together like this and take a square piece and cut a piece of stock square. And you can see I, I, I got it tight and I'm square. So I know my joints are lined up. Everything's good. All right. Now, to clamp these now, what we're going to do is lay them down flat. Lay them all down flat. Okay, apply the glue on here, apply the glue on, on here. Every, every side gets the glue. Glue all the surfaces, in other words. Now, after all the surfaces are glued tight, push them together tight like that. All right? Now, here's going to be our clamp. Uh, good old duct tape. And I'd put it about every six inches. If you got some long members, make sure you're putting this duct tape about every six inches because this is your clamp. You'll see what happens here in a second. Get it long enough. Okay, we're tight. The glue's in there. All we do is, is curl it. Okay, and to tighten the clamp, we pull back and stretch into here. And just pull on the tape and that is your clamp. And you can see that holds it together pretty decent. You'll see a little glue oozing out, and, and there's your perfect joint clamping up with duct tape. That's one way to do it. Some people will take one piece at a time and take these little pin nailers they got and pin nail them, and you can't really see the nails. I don't like doing that. But another way of gluing it up is you can make a jig. And one way of making the jig really inexpensive is that you could buy some T-Track. What I got, you can get some of that little little baby T-track or you can use a router bit make your own 
Here's a little keyhole bit. What we're going to do is cut a little keyhole in here and move the fence and cut it again for a quarter inch bolt. And what we're doing is we got some <coughs> two members of two inch stock going this way that we can take and slide. What we're going to do is put our stock into here, bring this over to here and clamp it. Now what, where do we want to go? We want to get this in here tight enough so that we are at 90 degrees here. So cut a little piece of scrap. When you're at 90, you lock this down. Okay. Then what we did is we took a Forstner bit and cut into that T-track here so that we could take a bolt, come into there, and slide this into that T-track or that keyhole slot. And once you get this all set up, it goes pretty fast. But we're going to take that, bring it down here, bring it down here. And then we just tighten this down. And what that does, you can see it already now, it's tightening up my outside joints. And it can't spread this way, we're at 90. And that's another way of clamping up these difficult angles. And this, teach, this track system can be made longer for longer pieces. So that's the ways you can uh, glue up our angles. Okay, um, now before you glue that up, if you want to put some fluting on there like we have here, you can do fluting that goes all the way through, or you can do some stop fluting where you stop and start. We'll show you how we do that. What we're going to do is we put a quarter inch diameter round nose bit into our router, and we've got it centered. We took some practice cuts and made sure we're centered. We're always putting the tongue side next to the fence, okay? What we'll do is we'll come down here, make sure you're centered, and take a little push block and push them through. Now, if you want to do some stop and starting, I always use the outside diameter of my ring, insert ring here, or the inside, depending on how big you want to go or how small. So let's come into here. And what I did is I just start and start, started it on the outside of the insert ring and stopped it in here. And there's your stop and start, even. And you can use the inside for the longer one. So that's how easy it is to uh, put fluting in there, too. And you add the, put the fluting in there, it adds just a little bit more, too, I think. So much stuff you can do with this angle making set. So if you can make this, practice on something like this. And then what you can do to make those bigger ones we showed you is just instead of making these things here three quarters of an inch, you can widen that radius out by making this an inch, inch and a half, two inches to get those big radiuses like on a, on a big island or something. But three quarters of an inch is about as small as you want to go for making a small radius like on an upper corner cabinet or a base cabinet. Okay, today you can see we created this angle right here. And this is our large angle. We use a little bit wider pieces. And we used 11 and a quarter bits. Now, if instead of just doing a 90 degree corner, if you wanted to go around a half or a full circle, these 11 and a quarter bits, you could, create, you could create a whole circle with 16 sides. With our next set of bits here, the 15 degree angle cuts, you could do 12 sided object. With the 22 and a half, you could create an eight sided object. And with the 45 degree angles, you could create a six sided object. So the the possibilities are endless using this angle make making set. It's just entirely up to you what you want to try and create, and I hope you have fun using it. <laughs>